record export volumes of iron ore, gas, coal and agriculture has turbocharged the Australian economy over the last year, with the federal government's tax revenue being beefed up beyond their original forecast. This has meant that the federal budget for 2022 has left extra cash in the tin to splash out on the Australian economy. Whilst the main focus in the media is on how many cash handouts are given to individuals and families, I want to focus on major infrastructure projects that have been funded. After all, infrastructure helps drive property and business investment decisions and is a longer term economic generator. So what are the big ticket items that are going to help expand our economy? How is this going to affect your business and what opportunities are going to open up as a result? Will it affect your investment decisions? Let's find out because today we're talking tactics. The Romans were the first true superpower in the world, and the key to their success was that they built the greatest road network in the world to help drive trade. As the old saying goes, all roads lead to Rome. And what was true 2,000 years ago still applies today, along with a bit of modern technology, because this budget has allowed for an additional 17.9 billion in road and rail spending. This is in addition to the funding of existing projects, so it's a fresh injection of capital. The big chunks of money are going to be committed as follows. 3.1 billion to deliver Melbourne intermodal terminal package in Victoria. A simplistic description is that this is the place where shipping containers arrive and are distributed throughout Australia with a specific focus of increasing the efficiency and capacity of the network. The main aim is to replace freight trucks with freight trains. Currently, a third of all port activity in Australia comes in via ports in Melbourne. So this is really looking to optimise the network so that goods can be delivered more efficiently. This also forms part of the 14.5 billion already committed to the Inland Rail Project, one of the most significant infrastructure projects in the world, connecting Melbourne to Brisbane via New South Wales, creating a holy trinity of Australia's rail freight network. If you want to hear more about this project, subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing a dedicated video on this project in the future. If you could also leave a like on this video while you're there, I'd really appreciate it. There's also 1.6 billion for the Brisbane to Sunshine Coast heavy rail extension in Queensland. This will go to Maroochydore, which is the CBD of the Sunshine Coast. There is another 1.121 billion for a faster heavy rail upgrade from Brisbane to the Gold Coast, specifically Currabee to Bean Lee. These Gold Coast to Brisbane to Sunshine Coast connections are being prioritised to help Southeast Queensland prepare for the Olympic Games in 2032. $1 billion for the Sydney to Newcastle faster rail upgrade, $2.264 billion for the North-South Corridor, Torrens to Darlington, 10.5 kilometre tunnel and rail network in Adelaide, $678 million to upgrade Outback Way, often described as Australia's equivalent to Route 66, is a highway that connects Laverton in Western Australia with Winton in Queensland via Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. Here's a bacon dozen rapid fire road projects also getting further funding. $636 million for the Pacific Highway at Wyong Town Centre. Another $336 million for Tasmanian Northern Roads Package. 200 mil for Anzac Highway to Cross Road in South Australia. 145 mil for South Western Highway to Tonkin Highway in WA. 140 for Regional Road Safety Upgrades in WA. 132 million for Central Australian Tourism Roads in the Northern Territory. 120 million for Adelaide Hills Productivity and Road Safety Package in South Australia. 46.7 mil for Athelon Drive Duplication in ACT. 352 million for Milton Ulladala Bypass in New South Wales. 320 million dollars for Bunbury Outer Ring Road in WA. 200 million for Tonkin Highway Stage 3 Extension in WA. 45 million for Ballarat to Oyen in Victoria. And 68.5 mil for the Cooktown to Weeper corridor upgrade. I hope I haven't lost you yet, because next up we're talking about water infrastructure, specifically dams. Another thing the Romans were famous for was building aqueducts. And expanding on this theme, there has been over $7 billion committed for dam projects, the bulk of which are in Queensland. This includes $5.4 billion to build Hellsgate Dam in North Queensland, $483 million 
million to build Urana Dam in central Queensland, 600 million for Paradise Dam near Bundaberg, and 126.5 million for Emu Swamp Dam near Stanthorpe. After several years of intense droughts and having to cart water into the town, I'm sure the people of Stanthorpe will really appreciate some more water storage capacity. In New South Wales, there is 433 million for Dungawan Dam near Tamworth and 300 million for Manton Dam near Darwin in the Northern Territory. There has also been a commitment of 27.5 million to develop the business case for 13 other water projects across the nation, which could see more dams committed to in the future. To sum up infrastructure, while there is something here for everyone, the clear winner of the budget is Queensland. It might have something to do with the coalition trying to shore up support from some of the minor parties, including Palmer, Catter, and Pauline Hanson, in the event of a hung parliament in the upcoming federal election. The next question is, how are we going to resource all of these projects? Queensland is going to need a lot more engineers, builders, tradies, hydrologists, earth movers, apprentices, laborers, you name it, we need it, in order to deliver on all these road, rail, and dam projects to get us ready for the Olympic Games in 2032. We're going to need homes to house these people and new offices to deliver on the absolute economic bonanza in store for Queensland. Speaking of which, if you need a new office space, why not give me a call? Tactic can help you source and negotiate a new office lease, design your fit out and get it built for you so you can keep focusing on attracting the best quality talent to your organisation, winning contracts and growing your business. One final thought before I go, what I'd like to see is a massive increase in immigration, particularly for skilled migrants. Australia had a net overseas migration of negative 90,000 people last financial year, just 41,000 people forecast for this financial year, and 180,000 people forecast for next financial year. This is a really long way off the highs of previous governments in the mid to high 200,000 mark. We are at a point in time where there is a high demand for skilled labor. The unemployment rate is down to 4%, and forecast to go even lower to 3.75%. When I was at school and uni, they used to talk about full unemployment being at 5% in economics class. We're already well below that level. The primary way that I earn a living is through negotiating office leases, whether it's to large corporations or SMEs, and this gives me access to some great knowledge of what businesses are up to. There is a consistent theme out there in the market at the moment, whether it's talking to a CEO, a CFO, a managing director, a business owner, a director, or a HR manager. The theme is that all of these organizations are growing. They are trying to attract staff and there aren't enough available people to fill roles in a very competitive environment to secure talent. We need skilled migrants to move to Australia and help us take our economy and climb the global economic rungs. We're currently the 13th biggest economy in the world and we sure as hell are going to overtake 11th place to Russia in the next year, particularly as all these sanctions are biting them hard. And given the strength of the Australian dollar and our incredible economic bounce back from the pandemic, I wouldn't be surprised if we also surpass 12th place to Brazil. Australia could easily be the 11th biggest economy by next year. Australia is no longer the little backwater that a lot of people think of us as. We are a developed first world economy and we are consistently smashing and outpacing other OECD countries in growth metrics. Together we can build an unstoppable economic force that is going to be the envy of the rest of the world. We just need the human capital to help deliver it. So what do you think? Are you a fan of big Australia or would you prefer we shrink? Is the government promising too much cash to an already turbo charged economic environment? Is the big spending agenda right for the current economic climate or have they overpromised? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed today's episode, I'd love it if you give us a like and hit that subscribe button, but I'd also love a referral even more. Are you looking for or know someone who needs some office space or an office fit out designed and built? Feel free to contact me so that the Tactic team can help you with your business expansion needs. I'll leave a link to get in contact with us in the description below. My name is Mel Picos and we've been talking tactics.